Hey, what's happening out there, YouTube world? All the social media links that you guys will see this videos on, see this video on. Uh, it's been a minute since I've done one, but Premier Leather Crafters and, and, and I have been busy, very busy over the past few couple of months, uh, past few months. Uh, and I, I haven't done a video in a while, but I wanted to show you guys this great finds that uh, I just picked up over the weekend. Actually, a couple of great finds. Uh, over this past weekend, starting the last Wednesday, um, my city starts the world's longest yard sale. And if you guys are familiar about that, if you haven't been familiar about that, I saw tags from all over the country that was there because this is the time, the prime time to find some great picks, especially if you're in the leather crafting world of the industry or even the leather crafters community, you can find some great picks at this world's longest yard sale that goes, it extends all the way up back up to uh, Bristol, Virginia, I believe, or somewhere right up in there. But my daughter and I decided this is our time that, that my daughter got in the car and, and we just drove about 35, 40 miles of it. We didn't drive the whole entire thing. And which I really regret every year. One of my time is limited on going that far. But I think I'm gonna start making plans because I found some great picks that's dealing with this leather crafting industry that I want to share with show you guys. Uh, one, you can, especially if you're looking for, um, if you're into the saddle industry, uh, saddle part of leather makers, leather making, you can find some great picks and great finds on some saddles that needs to be refurbished, or you can buy them and, and re, 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 uh, recondition them or whatever, and put those up for sale. Saves you a lot of time, saves you a lot of money on that. And then, uh, you can, uh, in any, really, anything that you want to do. If you guys are looking, if you guys are knife makers, uh, you can find a lot of people that are out there selling knives and putting knives up. So, and if you're into making the leather, uh, the leather sheets for knives, you can find some great picks and finds with just in the knives industry. You can find some great picks and finds. Um, if you want to get off into custom uh, refurbishing holsters and you can find some old holster rigs that people have had from way back in the day, some really true collectibles. So this is my time that I turn into American Picker. Hey, they need to invite me on that show, man, because I can take them some places here in Alabama that have some stuff that they have never, ever seen before. But let's get off into the meat and potatoes of this because I want to show you guys um, what I found. And it's a continuation of last year. Last year, you know that this time, I found a little spot in this little community called Black Creek Community, which is uh, not too far from, from, from me. But this guy was covered up in his little shop. If you rode right past it, you'd think it was an old abandoned barn, but it's an antique shop that's right there. And I found he had a whole entire room full of the eight day or the uh, what we some people call them mantle clocks, some people call them humpback clocks, but he had all of these antique clocks that was in there. And I found one, we posted it last year, but this year I wanted to get and buy more of them. As well as uh, I got off into doing leather furniture art. You can find a lot of nice, small, inexpensive pieces uh, at this yard sale that people are just getting rid of stuff. Uh, the old traveler's uh, chest that some of the stuff that you might have seen on the movie Titanic, the what the a lot of the uh, first wave immigrants brought over. That's how they trapped, brought, uh, carried all of their their clothing and their possessions and stuff. You can find all of those things at this yard sale, and they're really, really, really inexpensive and cheap. Some of them might need some repairs too. Some of them uh, they they're ready to rock and roll. But if you're into leather wrapping. Uh, and wrapping those up with leather. You still have the original hardware on these pieces uh, and you just cover them up with leather, redecorating them, the old cedar chest, the old cedar trunks. Uh, it's just amazing the, the uh, amount of compartments and trays and drawers that they put into these boxes that were made from the first wave immigrants that came to this country that dates all the way back to the 20s and 30s. So, which leads me to, you can find those and wrap those in leather and you can really sell those and get some high dollar prices on. So let's get off into this. I'm gonna pull this camera down and show you guys uh, the two great finds that we found. And let me 
get over this way. Here we go. Two more of the eight day humpback clocks. This is one of the jewels here. Love this piece. Now, the research that I found on this, now, and let me tell you guys something. If you're getting off into wrapping these antique clocks, just a key thing, a few things that you want to look for. Uh, now, this one didn't come with a glass face. This clock, from my research, just over, from over the weekend, my research revealed this is German made around the 1930s, late 1920s, maybe around, after, I'm going to say, in between. Um, 1925 and 1935. Uh, the company that made these are is called Controller um, Clocks, which the good intraweb said it was German made. So this is German made, and don't worry about it not having any glass face. They didn't maybe they didn't put a glass face on these, but you can see these are the wind up eight day clocks. The original ones, they come with these type of looking funny keys that what you have to wind them up with. And if I can get in close on that, you guys can see the patina that's on the hands. So that's aged, aged look real well, very well structured together. And also from what I found, this is what really caught my eye. Move that camera about the minute I light out the way. This tag said number three, and that's the name of the maker right up there. So this is the number three clock, and I found this for a steal, a steal. Let me get this light up in here so you guys can see the inner workings of it. And this is a five chime, four, five, five chime uh, humpback or mantle clock number three so this one and as well as let me drop this in here too so, so you guys i don't want to hold you guys long um the smaller the clocks the more expensive and this is german made this one here i haven't found enough research on these yet but this is a one two three four five six seven eight eight chime eight chime clock and it has the pendulum in this one uh, we're going to take this to my clock maker, my restoration guy, and have him restore those, have him clean them up, oil them real good, get them all ready to rock and roll. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to break out with my masking tape, and then I'm going to wrap these in the masking tape, get all of my measurements and my, uh, my, 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 my leather pieces precise. Then I'm going to take that off, lay that out on the poster board. Y'all stay tuned. I'll do a video on that real soon. And then uh, while I'm working on the leather aspect of it, I'll be taking these up to my clock guy, letting him oil them and clean them up. This one here, don't be dismayed about this, this brass facing. Now, this one has a glass face, but don't be dismayed about that. Another eight day. See the, the, the key ways. And this one controls the hour hand, the minute hand, and the seconds. And then I'm trying to figure out what this little lever is here right there trying to figure out what that little lever is but i'll get that to my clock guy and he can tell me more about that too but now these your big ones are a little bit more popular but they're not just because they're big doesn't mean they're more expensive so you really if just for me and my research you want to find the uh any, either the these size the big size, a lot of people want them because they're right there on top of their mantelpiece, their fireplace, or wherever they want to post these at. And then the, uh, or in the smaller ones as well. So, but just to show you guys, and then the, uh, the cedar chest. The cedar chest are another thing. And I know this might sound like a bit of a little bit of ramble a little bit, but guys, I'm trying to tell you, this is a money maker. And especially when you can find any yard sale, any type of thing like that, where you can find these old antique places, just go in, find them, invest a little bit of money on getting them the parts and everything all up and ready to roll. Then you can wrap them in your leather, do your thing on there, and then these pieces can go for high dollar. Uh, the smaller one is probably going to go into the 500 to low 500s. And then the larger one, it'll go from anywhere from from uh, 350 to 425, depending on the detailing of leather work, which you guys know how to do. Hey, this is the Leather Cowboy with another great pick and find in this leather world business. And you guys stay tuned. More videos to come real soon. Y'all stay pimping.
Peace.